Hi folks, this is Ron Longwell, and I'm glad you're here today for another episode of the Jesus Society Podcast, a conversation exploring relationship, renewal, and purpose in the kingdom of God. Uh, this is episode 59 of the Jesus Society Podcast. I said 60 in my notes. I better fix that. Um, so uh, today I want to encourage you uh, just a little bit, or at least I want to try to encourage you a little bit. But But before we get into that, before I do that, I need to I need to kind of do a little housekeeping here. So, uh, regarding the last episode, so I need to just let you know. Uh, depending on since I don't know where you listen to your podcasts at, you're gonna wonder. You might wonder what the heck's going on. So, when I published the last episode, uh, episode fifty eight, uh, which came out on uh, August or April fifth. Um, the audio was bad. About 34 minutes into it, the audio just kind of cut out. And I didn't know this for a couple of days because I it, it was it took a couple of days for me to start getting feedback from people who were listening to it. Uh, and then it took me a couple of days after that to, to figure out what to do about that. So, so I initially tried a couple of things. I, I'm probably telling you things that you really don't care about, but I'm going to just by full disclosure, I want to let you know what kind of how we manage this. Um, I went ahead, my my illustrious audio engineer fixed the uh, issues. We, we got to the bottom of why that was the case, and and he fixed those things. And I tried um, uploading the new audio file to the existing um, episode. And what I didn't know... This was a bit of an experiment because I didn't know I've, I've not had to deal with this yet. So I did what I wasn't sure of was whether all the and you may not know this. So you, when you do a podcast, you have a podcast host, um, and then um, all the other um, podcast services like Spotify and uh, Apple Music and and um, or Apple Podcasts. Now they keep changing the name on it. All those other places, they just index those through an RSS feed. Uh, so I don't have to actually publish the thing on all those all those different different platforms, right? I publish it one place, and then all those other places, I have it set up to index those. So what I what I didn't know was if I if I publish a new audio file to an existing episode, would all those other platforms index that new audio file and replace it, right? Um, I didn't know that. I didn't know whether they'd do that or not. So as, a, as sort of a fail-safe, I published a, a second episode that I called episode 59 um, and just and uploaded the same audio file, the corrected audio file, um, just in case. And this was a bit of a test just to see how all this worked. So as it turned out, um, Apple Podcasts and I believe everything else. I didn't check all of them. They they do re-index that stuff. So so if you go to Apple Podcasts today and look at episode fifty eight and listen to it, you're going to hear the corrected audio file, um, the full without the lapse and everything's fine. Um, I, I assume that that's the same with Spotify and Amazon and uh, iHeartRadio and all the other places where we where we are. But I didn't check all those, so that means I had a, I had a new episode. I had a duplicate episode, episode fifty nine. So what I just did a minute ago, once I realized that, is I deleted episode fifty nine. I don't know that that will delete on all the other things. So I, what I'm publishing today, <laughs> what I'm recording today, is going to be episode fifty nine. We'll get our numbering all straight. And hopefully that'll all push out to the various platforms and everything will be copacetic and wonderful. And um, But in case it's not, sorry, just deal. <laughs> okay? Um, I, like, I don't know how this is going to work in YouTube, right? Because I publish these to YouTube, too. Um, so I don't. I just don't have any... I, I, I can't control all that. And really, I, at, lo at some level, I don't care. Um, you know, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to just get good content out. And however that plays downstream, I just, I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't know everything. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm doing this. I'm not, I'm not doing this for money. So I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not really making any money on this. So if this were a full-time gig generating an income, you know, I would be a lot more, I would be willing to put a lot more effort into that kind of stuff and make sure everything was perfect. But I'm not, and I don't. So there we go. Now we've just burned five and a half minutes here of just me blabbering about that kind of stuff. And that is not what I want to talk about today. Uh, I want to I want to try to encourage you a bit. So uh, let me have a sip of coffee, um, and then I will start the encouragement process. Uh, okay, so I had I had coffee yesterday with a with a dear friend of mine. We have uh, we have coffee, and I, I've told you this before. I've got. I've got several people that I meet with every week. Um, just it's part of my ministry is just to love people and um, and spend time with them and encourage them and help them figure out how to take the next steps with with Jesus. That's that's my that's my gig. That's my thing. Um, it is what I think God has called me to do. So I have I have a bunch of guys that I meet with at various times throughout the week. Several little groups of, of guys. Um, so I had coffee with uh, this dear friend of mine yesterday, and we were just talking about, we ended up talking about um, a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about with you today. Uh, and I would give anything now to have had microphones um, and to just record that conversation that we had uh, in the diner yesterday, um, because we had a, we had a, I thought was a fantastic conversation. And I think had we been able to record it, had we thought about that ahead of time, I think you'd all find it very, very helpful um, and a blessing. I, it was a blessing to me. I think it was a blessing to him. Um, but you know, I don't, I don't go into conversations with people normally with the idea, hey, let's record this for the podcast. Um, that's just not what I'm doing when I'm meeting with people. So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to give you the gist of of our of our conversation um, yesterday today in this podcast because there's some important stuff that we touched on um, and I'll, and I'll start it by making it about me. Um, I, I have spent most of my life feeling um, inadequate, uh, different from other people, uh, inferior. And I, I no longer, generally feel that way. Um, and, and I'll get to that part of the story in a, in a little bit. But what I have learned in, in the last 20 or 30 or 40 years of, of my life and ministry and talking to a lot of other people is that I am not alone. Uh, in fact, many of the people that I end up talking with week in, week out, tend to live in that same space. Um, we just we just feel awkward. We feel different. We don't feel, you know, we just we just feel inadequate most of the time in in most or at least many situations that we find ourselves in. Many of our relationships, many of our uh, work environments, we we feel inferior and inadequate, and. Um, the thing that grows out of that is unappreciated, right? And we all want to feel appreciated. We all want to feel, we all want to feel like we're kind of okay with ourselves and that the rest of the world perceives us as, you know, okay at some level, whatever that means. But I find that most of us don't feel that way. And so we find, and I think that's true regardless of how you tend to come across, because I think we have, we have, as as people, we are remarkably resilient, and we found out we found incredible ways and created incredible ways to cope with that and and mask that and hide that and and um, and just try to make sure that we're perceived the way we want to be perceived, whether or not that's how we really feel inside. Like we're 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 very good at crafting a um, a persona in the public sphere 
that matches the way we want to be perceived. Uh, social media is all about that. It's easy to do in social media. It's much harder to do day in and day out in the context of, of relationship, real relationships with real people, you know, in a work environment or um, or a um, or even your your personal relationships. But so that's the, that's the that's the thing, right? We 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 just all feel at one level or another in, inadequate and inferior. And a lot of that comes down to personality things. Um, you know, we all have, we all have different personalities and we have, we have kind of culturally, at least in America, um, over the last 50, 7,500 years, we've sort of, sort of, um, I think we, we promote the idea that everybody ought to be the same, that here are the characteristics and qualities that, that we all ought to ought to have and be and do and and show and those are those are the right things for everybody. The problem is we all have different personalities. Um, you know, there's a limited number of personalities, so there's a lot of overlap with a lot of us. Um, and and you can, I, I always say, you should know who you are, right? Like you really ought to know who you are. You ought to take some personality tests. Um, you ought to, you ought to, and all personality tests are flawed. Uh, none of them are perfect and the best of them are not going to tell you everything about yourself. They're not even going to be a hundred percent accurate, right? But they'll get you started. And there's a, there's a couple, if you've never taken a personality test, we live in 2021. Um, I think many, many people, get some of this and like you should do this. But if you have never taken a personality test, there's a whole bunch out there and some, in my opinion, some are better than others. So I'll, I'll just, I'll just give you a couple of resources um, that you can find that I think are useful. Okay. Not don't wrap your whole existence around this, but I think there's, there's a couple that are, that I would say are more useful than others. At least I have found, and I've taken most of them. So I would say um, the Myers Briggs um, assessment, and it's not a test, right? These are not tests. Like they're not tests in the sense that you know there's right and wrong answers, right? There's there's right personality types and wrong personality. That's just not true. They're assessments. They're they're tools to help you get to know yourself. Okay. So the Myers Briggs is is very popular. It's very credible. It's 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 a good one. Okay. Um, I will I will tell you what my uh, Myers Briggs thing is. Uh, I am an uh, INFJ, and those four you'll you'll get a if you take Myers Briggs you'll you'll find out that there's a four letter code that you come out with that all represent different aspects of of um, different four different continuums on 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 which you can um, sort of score. I'm an INFJ, and I, I'm not going to go into what all that means. You can you can you can dig into that and and figure that out. Like that's not what this is about. Um, but that's a very good one. Like take that assessment, and there, there's different ways you can do that. You might have to pay a little bit, but I think there's some free versions out there. Um, figure out like read into the read. You know, if you take it and you find out you're an INFJ or a or an IFTJ or whatever whatever you turn out to be, like read about those, read about each of those four things and what they mean for you, and reach it. Read about how the combination of those your unique combination combination of those things how that kind of wires you to to kind of function in the world. Okay. Another one that I I might have mentioned before in a podcast, I'll, and I'll say it again. And it's not really a personality test or assessment, um, but it can kind of be thought of that way uh, and without doing a deep dive into this. It's the Enneagram. Uh, The Enneagram, there's a couple of good books. Um, The Road Back to You is the book I I recommend to everybody when they're just sort of diving into this for the first time. Um, It's a very good book. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Um, and it's a very good thing to kind of help you understand kind of how you're wired and how you tend to respond to the world around you. Very, very good stuff. Um, the Enneagram has some roots in some very old um, Christianity. 
uh, very, very old Christianity, rooted way, way back. Um, and, well, that's all I'll say about that. Anyway, you, need to, you ought to know yourself, okay? And that'll help you kind of come to peace with who you are. What I, what I want to say, the heart of what I'm trying to say in this podcast episode today is that, and, and I'm going to get into more of this as we go through, you are exactly who God made you to be, okay? With some caveats that we'll get into, but you are, you are who God wants you to be and you're, you are a gift to the world. Part of our struggle in, in feeling that way, in, in, in living out of that space and feeling okay about who we are, is that we live, in a, we live in kind of a broken, marred world in which um, sin has reigned. There are, there are dark forces that, when we, when we talked about this recently, when you, when you, when you sin, you, you give those dark forces power over you and they get in your head and... Uh, Right, and they affect the way we treat other people, and 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 all that. So we live in a, we live in a messed up world, um, and the world is not what God wants it to be, and He's working on recreating that. But part of the, part of the problem is that we live in a world that values certain things, right? Um, in our modern twenty first century world, we we tend to value, um, we value strength. And power, right? And so the people that get all the credit are the people that we perceive as being strong. And you know, the whole Trump phenomenon was in part because Trump was a strong man, right? He he was perceived as a strong man, and a lot of people felt like we needed us somebody with strength in that leadership uh, role as president. Um, we we value productivity. We, you know we're we're a product of the industrial age, and and we value you know it's the get her done kind of mentality. Um, people who get stuff done, who do things, who accomplish things, who are who are productive. The the workaholics, right? Um, the the people who uh, man, I'm got to go to work. <laughs> I've got a friend who always says that. We laugh at him. Got to go to work. Um, you know we value productivity. We value brilliance, right? The 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 the, the icons of 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 technology and and um, you know we value the Warren Buffetts and the and the the um, the brilliant people, the Elon Musks of the world, right? Um, we value decisiveness. We we like people who can look at a situation and just say, "All right, this is what we got to do. This is this is how we're going to do this." And they have an answer, and they have a, they're decisive. We value that that those things. We value uh, extroversion uh, and gregariousness. We we people who who are um, uh, who just seem to 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 get along with everybody. You know, people who we just who are who are extroverts. They they they're people lovers. They you can they meet you and you just feel like man, I really like this person, right? Because they they just are outgoing and. And gregarious, and you know, so those are those are a, sort of a collective of of qualities that we tend to value in our modern Western world. The problem is we're not all. Most of us are not all those things. Most of us might shine on one of those things, but a lot of us don't shine on any of those things, right? And if you live in a world as we do that values. Uh, strength and productivity and brilliance and decisiveness and and gregariousness and you're not really wired in any of those ways well you come away feeling like gosh i'm i'm kind of worthless i don't really have anything to give i'm kind of useless right and i want to say that none of those things are bad of course, right? Strength, strength is a good thing. Productivity is a good thing. Um, brilliance and, and intelligence is a good thing. Decisiveness is a good thing. Um, even extroversion is a good thing. 
Those things are great and they're beautiful and they're important for people who are wired that way. But while those are all good things, they're not the only good things. They're not the only good things. The world also needs other things. And and I'm going to give you a list of some of those other things. And these things are not exclusive to the list we just made, right? Some of those things, you you find people who are who are decisive, but they're also patient, right? But I, but I want to say the world needs some other things and the world needs, the world needs patience. The world needs wisdom. The world needs kindness. The world needs presence. Um, so, so I, I'll tell you a story about that, what I mean by presence. So my father-in-law, who has now gone to be with the Lord, um, he was a, um, uh, he was a missionary in Papua New Guinea for years. Uh, my wife grew up in Papua New Guinea. She was there from um, uh, from the age of seven until she came back to go to college at the age of eighteen. Um, and uh, sometime I'm gonna, if I can ever convince her, I'm gonna get her in to talk about. I'm gonna get her on the show to talk about what it's like being a th- kind of a third culture, what we call a third culture kid, growing up in a different culture and then coming back to America. And seeing with fresh eyes what what life is like in America, right? Um, but my father-in-law, he was a get-her-done kind of guy. When he first went to Papua New Guinea, he was busy all the time. He was he was meeting people and loving on people and preaching and teaching and doing all that stuff. But he was also, you know, working on the on the church building and fixing the church bus and and doing you know lots and lots of stuff. Well. At one point in his uh, in his ministry over there, he developed a spinal cord tumor and uh, had to be rushed back to the states. And in about a week or two weeks after he was diagnosed with this in New Guinea, he was back in the states and he was paralyzed from the neck down. Well, he had to. He had to. They gave her gave him radiation. They were able to shrink this tumor on the on the uh, you know right on the upper part of his spine, um, and they were able to shrink it enough that he got some movement back. But he was partially paralyzed for the rest of his life. He was eventually able to walk on to walk on four using forearm crutches, and he was able to move around. And when he was in therapy for that, it was a the better part of a year that he was in a hospital. Um, just trying to recover from from all this. And while he was in therapy, he said, um, and this was in West Texas, and if you've ever been to West Texas, you know, West Texas is pretty darn flat. Um, in Lubbock, where he was, it is it is tabletop flat, literally. You can drive um, around up there, and it is flat as a pancake there. Pancake. There is not a, there is not a ripple um, in, the, in the terrain. It is flat, flat, flat. So when he was in therapy... He said, I want, to, I want to learn to climb stairs. And his therapists are saying, well, why? Like, this is Lubbock, Texas. There's, you don't have to climb stairs to do anything in Lubbock, Texas. They, like, there's, it's flat, everything is flat ground. He said, I want to learn to climb stairs. So they taught him to climb stairs. The reason he wanted to climb stairs, and this was back in the 70s, I think, right? But the reason he wanted to climb stairs is because when the plane land lands it lands landed in Papua New Guinea, uh, they didn't have one of the modern you know chutes that come out to the plane and you walk off on level ground. They had stair the stairs. You had, like if you if you were going to get on and off a plane in Papua New Guinea, you had to climb the stairs. And in his mind, he was going back. Being paralyzed was not going to stop him. He was going back to Papua New Guinea to the people that he loved. And continue to do the mission work that he that he did, and that is exactly what he did. He went back for another, I don't remember, five seven years after after he was paralyzed. And the interesting thing was he, when he talked about that, he he said that the ministry he did in New Guinea after he was paralyzed was more significant and more productive than the ministry he did before. And the reason was when he went back after he was paralyzed, the only thing he could do 
was sit and visit with people. He couldn't fix the church bus. He couldn't work on the on the church building. He couldn't he couldn't deal with the plumbing issues or the electric issues or like he there was so much he couldn't do because he was paralyzed. But what he could do was sit with people and just be with them and love them. Right. Now, it would be easy for him to, to look at that situation and say, I, I, I'm just so, this, this thing happened to me and I'm not as useful and I'm not as worthwhile and I'm kind of worthless and puny in all the ways that I wasn't before and so I'm not as useful. That just was not the truth at all. He was more useful in ways that mattered. Okay, the world needs people who can sit and just love people, talk to them, visit with them, who have the time. I have spent a great deal of my life. I, so I, I have said, I don't remember what I've talked about on this podcast. My, my father, who I love and who I believe to this day is in heaven, and I can't wait to visit with him on the other side of this, when when we're when we're all new people and neither of us are as broken and flawed and and um, and marred by sin as we were when when he was walking around on this earth. I long to have a conversation with him in the renewed creation. But he wasn't always a great father. He had his own he he was broken in his own ways and that brokenness affected as it does with us all the way he interacted with the world but I didn't always have the, the the kind of father I wish I'd had the kind of nurturing loving supportive father that God is to all of us right so most of my life I I longed for a, an older wiser kind man who could just sit with me and and talk with me and kind of nurture me and the Lord has given me people like that over the years, different at different times. Um, my my choir teacher in high school, a man named Michael Malthainer, who I who I loved, was that way. Um, a, a fellow that I that I knew in Montana um, named Dave Dave McClellan. He doesn't even know he was that for me, but he was that for me. Um, Sperry Hogue was was that for me at different. You know, different people. The Lord has placed people in my life to be surrogates in the ways that I needed him at the moment. Um, but I've always wanted somebody that could just be there, just be a presence in my life when I needed somebody. So, what I'm, what I, all that I've kind of gone off on presence, but people who can just be with you and walk with you and love you, those are really important people. The get her done kind of people are often too busy. For that, okay. Um, the world needs that. The world also needs people with a great deal of mercy. The world needs people with compassion. There are lots of valuable characteristics, and we don't all have all of them. But I want to say to you. The ones God has given you are valuable and important and necessary in the world, even if they're different from the, the big list that we mentioned at the outset. The truth about you, my friends, according to God Almighty who created you, is that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139 verses 13 and 14 says this. You probably have heard these verses before, but they are important verses to just sort of spend some time with. Let these let this let this truth sink in and let it inform your sense of your own identity. For you, God, you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
your works, including me, are wonderful. And I know that full well. These, these verses describe a state of being that I think God wants us all to live in. He wants us all to be able to, 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 to live day in and day out with a, with a settled knowledge and conviction that, that God created you and he, he knit you together with care and love and purpose and he made you exactly the way he, he wants you to be. Even if that looks different than the way somebody else is. Even if that looks different than the, than the, than the list of qualities that our modern world tends to value most. If the Lord made you different, it's because the world needs people just like you. And he made you to, to be that for, for the world. And all too often in a world deeply flawed by sin and idolatry, we, we just tend to, we tend to categorize personality qualities in all the wrong ways. You know, if somebody is tender and, and, and sensitive and empathetic, we tend to look at people like that and say, well, you're just, you're just not tough enough. You, you've got, you've got, your thin's too skin. You need to develop some thicker skin, boy. You're weak. I've had people tell me, because I'm, I'm kind of a sensitive sort. I, I've got kind of thin skin. I am easily hurt. If you want to hurt me, you can hurt me, and it doesn't take much effort. And I've had people tell me over the years, I've had people tell me this in ministry before, you just need to develop some thicker skin. Here's the thing, folks. If you've got thin skin... Like there's a, there's a, here's the thing. Every gift, right? Every, let me say it this way. Every gift that God has given you comes built in with a set of vulnerabilities. Okay? So if you, if the Lord has made you sensitive, if he has made you with a tender, sensitive heart, you've got thin skin. That means that you're, it's easy to hurt you. Right, and you're going to spend a lot of you're going to spend a lot of your life being hurt. And bless your heart, I hate that. I'm that way. It's I get bruised a lot. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. You are a gift to the world. The world needs people who are sensitive and tender, tender because that quality allows you to be empathetic. It allows you to be compassionate in a way that, that people with thicker skin just can't be. They're not wired that way. Right? So, so what I what I want to say to you is if you're like if, if you're easily hurt, for instance, instead of seeing that as a as a as a character flaw, see that start seeing that as a gift. Start seeing that as God has equipped you to be something wonderful for the world. If you're, if you're kind of a careful, thoughtful sort of person, right? The world may look at you and say, you're, just, you're kind of just slow and unproductive and lazy and indecisive and wishy-washy. Those, those labels may be used by flawed people about you. But folks, don't believe that. Because if you're careful, if you're a careful and thoughtful kind of person, you, oh my, you're a gift. Okay? Um, in, instead, of, instead of walking through this world um, feeling totally unremarkable, I, I've got a friend who jokingly says, that he's below average in everything he does. He's not, and he's kind of joking. He knows he's not. But we all, we all want to feel remarkable, don't we? We all want to feel special, don't we? But if you're, if you're a careful, thoughtful kind of person, 
What that means is that you're, you're, you move through this world in a way that you are prone to get things right. You tend to, be, you tend to see details that are important, that are lost to other people. You, you, you are endowed, you tend to be endowed with understanding that other people don't have because you're, you're methodical, you're, you're slow to form conclusions. You, you think analytically, you're, you're careful. You're going to be perceived as indecisive and sometimes unproductive and wishy-washy and slow and maybe even lazy. That's not true. That's probably not true, right? The Lord has made you, your mind works differently and you are a gift to the world. The world needs, the world needs that. If you're, a, if you're an introvert, we, we live in a world that values extroversion. We value gregariousness. We, we like people like that. But let me tell you what, the scientists that are working in labs figuring out how to cure cancer, those are probably not extroverts. Those are people that can spend months and years trying to figure out a problem. And those are the people that are going to discover the answer to, to cancer. They're going to, those are the people that are going to, they're going to solve the problems that, that we have that, that you just can't fix with quick decisiveness. The, the researchers, the analysts, the people that really bear down and understand. It takes a special kind of person to do that. And, and you're, if you're that way, you are a gift. My gosh, we need people like you. Um, there's a book uh, called Quiet. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you, I can't remember the... Um, hang on a minute, I'm going to look this up. Um, because you should read this book. If you're an introvert, um, you should read the book called, here it is. Um, it's, it's a book written by Susan Cain, C-A-I-N. Uh, the book is called Quiet. And the, the, the subtitle of the book is The Power of Introverts in a World that Can't Stop Talking. You should, you should read this book. If you're an introvert and you constantly feel like you ought to be an extrovert, if you felt in the, in the world that, you, that you're just flawed and worthless and unremarkable and, and you, there's no place in the world for you, there's a reason you feel that way. Because our world values extroversion. And, and so introverts feel that way. You should read the book Quiet because... That book makes the case that introverts are essential to our world. Like we, we won't function well at all without some introverts among us. Okay? Folks, you're a gift. I want, I want all of you, or as we say in the South, all y'all, right? Y'all is plural, right? It's a plural word. Um, and it's, a, it's a singular plural so you can talk about one person and say, how y'all doing? And you're talking to one person. The plural of, of y'all is all y'all <laughs> here in the South, okay? So I want all y'all to start believing what God says about you. I want you, to, I want you to start believing that who God made you to be is, is who you need to be. And I want you to start believing that who God made you to be is what the world needs you to be. You don't help any of the rest of us by pretending to be something you're not. You are only going to find your fit in this world by embracing the person that God made you to be. Now, that doesn't give you the, the right to run roughshod over people or, or, or just bully your way through. Like, we're not, you know, you still have to be the person of Jesus. You still have to... The, the fruit of the Spirit still has to live in you. You know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Those are the fruits of fruit of the Spirit that are that the Spirit is going to produce in you, whether you're an introvert or an extrovert. Okay, um, whether you're sensitive or or kind of tough. 
whether you're careful or decisive, right? The fruit of the Spirit is going gonna, is gonna to live in you no matter, right? But you need to be the person you are. The world desperately needs, the kingdom of God desperately needs you to be who God made you to be. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, and the Lord wants you to know that full well. And we're all enslaved by various allegiances to things that are not of God. And so we've, got, we've all got chinks in our armor there. But at your core, at the center of who you really, really are, you are exactly who God created you to be. And God created you to be a gift in the world. The world needs people exactly like you. And with that, I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope you'll join us again next week. As always, we'd appreciate it if you'd tell others about the podcast. Share this episode with people. If you, if, if you know people that you think this will be helpful for, share it with them. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe and rate and review us. Um, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, wherever you get your podcast. Um, please visit us on our, on our Facebook uh, page for the Jesus Society podcast. Check out our website, thejesussociety.com. Uh, the, the episodes are slowly, gosh, I've been saying this for several months now. We're getting them up on iTunes or on uh, Amazon and Odyssey. We'll get them there. Um, got other things to do. If you feel the need um, to support this show um, in a financial way, um, we, would, we would be blessed if you do that. Um, you can go to our Patreon page, and there's a link in the show notes for where that is. But only do that if, if, if you feel God tugging on your heart to do that. Thanks for listening, and remember you are greatly, greatly loved.